Good to see you all. It's a pretty good turnout considering last night everyone was up apparently very late having a good time. Not me, but anyway, you guys. Yeah. Uh, so the dinner last night went really well. Thank you for everybody who helped out. It was a great success, uh, especially for our first event back from after COVID. Uh, it was great. We had indoor outdoor. We had people outside. We had people inside. Uh, the food was great and uh, a lot of fun was had by all. So thank you all. Special thank you to Iva and for Mary Lou for uh, for doing a bulk of the organizing. Oh, sorry, you didn't do anything, Mary Lou? Oh, okay. <laughs> for Iva. So um, anyway, but we had so much help from the congregation; it was great. We had a really, really great help, and so uh, thank you so much. We don't have the final numbers in, but yes, we did make money, so that's good. That's always a good thing, uh, and uh, everybody had a great time. A couple of other announcements. Um, this afternoon at 2 p.m., the Megan Funeral Home is hosting the Butterfly Release Service. It'll be at the Curling Club at the fairgrounds, so come by if you want to come by. Uh, we are taking part in the Canada Day Parade this year. Our theme is the light to the future. And if you want to take part, be on the float, that's great. Um, wear your Canada Day outfit, that's wonderful. Make up a sign saying, you know, we're the light for the future or whatever and bring it. If you just want to come and help decorate, about 11.30 here at the church parking lot, we'll be decorating the float. Be good to see a lot of people there, a lot of parishioners on the float, so it should be great. Next uh, Sunday is July 3rd, and it'll be our 1872 service, our reenactment service. So please dress up like it's 1872. I don't think any of you were around in 1872, but we do have some pictures and things like that. Um, should be a lot of fun. So uh, it's, it's going to be the old prayer book service. It's going to be a lot of that. So should be a good time. And also we are going to have some presentations of certificates by various levels of government to help us celebrate our 150th. So please remember that. Uh, we're looking for items for our time capsule. It's going to be open in 25 years. And hopefully we'll find the one we buried 25 years ago to open. Uh, but if you have anything that you want to show, like what, what's been the last 25 years in our society or the church or even in your life, um, you can add it to that, we'll bury it, and then dig it up in 25 years. Um, it should be a lot of fun, so please keep that in mind. We won't bury it until August, so you have some time to think about it. Uh, the announcement is still there for Chancellor Guild. We need people on Chancellor Guild. If you're interested, um, you can talk to me at coffee hour. That would be great. Our radio golf tournament is on July the 30th. Uh, tee off time at 1 p.m. at Cedarhurst. If you want to take part, you see the cost there. Or if you don't want to take part, you can just come and relax on Lake Simcoe at David and Janice's place. You can go into the water. You can go to the deck. Janice will host you as, as only Janice can do. Uh, and so that'll be great. For want information, Janice is here today. You can just uh, talk to her about it say, I want to go. Uh, so I, apparently, because it's a church event, you have to bring food for the potluck your own beverage for drinking, and your own lawn chair, so uh, and still pay. So it's perfect. It's a perfect recipe. Um, it's always a lot of fun. So um, and if you haven't been to their place on the lake, it's, it's really wonderful. So there you go. Tomorrow is Bible study. It'll be our last of our four-part series on the letters of John. So Bible study, 10 o'clock in the church hall if you want to join us. Uh, and when you leave church today, we invite you to look up way up to look at the cross at the top of the bell tower. Uh, which has been repaired and repainted after two years of being broken. You should have known already that it needed to be repaired. Special thanks go to the prisoner who donated the funds to get this accomplished. The rest of the painting will be starting tomorrow uh, for the building, and so we hope that will be completed before the 150th celebrations later this week. And we still have to prepare, we still have to pay for the completion of the painting, so if you want to donate to that, that's great. Brian has, Brian and, and Evelyn have some pictures in the front hall of when the guy came with the crane and hung from the crane to fix the uh, cross. So it's kind of really cool. I, was, I wanted to do it, but you know, I wasn't around. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I heard Evelyn, Brian wanted Evelyn to go up, but she said no. So I don't know what that means, but anyway, so um, you want to see the pictures, they're really quite, quite spectacular. So uh, if you're afraid of heights, you should be doing that job for sure. So I think that's it. Are there any other announcements? Am I missing anything? Okay. Our processional hymn is 362 in your blue hymn books. Tell out my soul, number 362.
white in your green service book. Page 185. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you are our soul. All desires come. And from you no secrets are hidden. But in the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Kings chapter 2 beginning at the first verse. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and stood at some distance from them. And as they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. 
Elijah said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elijah kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for this morning are parts of Psalm number 77, and you can find them starting on page 804 in your book of alternative services. Psalm 77, starting on page 804, verses 1 to 2, and then 11 to the end. And so today we're going to have the epistle side, this side of the church, do the odd verses, and you'll respond with the even verses, and we'll go back and forth. So 1 and 2, and then we'll jump over to 11. And so we'll start with the epistle side. I will cry aloud to the Lord. I will cry aloud, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hands were stretched out by night and did not tire. I refused to be comforted. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are a God who works wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out the water. The skies thundered, your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, and your paths in the great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. God of saving power, Remember us in times of sorrow and despair. Redeem us with your strength and guide us through the wilderness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the second. from Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 and then 13 to 25 for freedom Christ has set us free for you were called to freedom brothers and sisters only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another for the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, for those who for those are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not subject to the law now the works of the flesh are obvious fornication impurity licentiousness idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy anger quarrels, dissensions, factions, 
envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I have warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passion and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel Grab the Hymn, number 505, in our blue hymn books, Be Thou My Vision. We'll sing the first two verses before the gospel in three and four hours. In 505. receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And Jesus said, No one who puts a hand on the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you.
tough readings today for some of us, eh? Uh, I know that when Janice was reading that list from Galatians, you notice the things we shouldn't be doing is a lot longer than the things that we are doing or should be doing. Uh, and I think sometimes you kind of read that list, you're kind of like, oh, well, that's other people. And you're like, oh, wait a second, that one, that one sounds like me. I shouldn't be doing that. And that's the thing, right? So scripture sometimes challenges us in a very specific way. I know sometimes we sort of sit here and we're like, okay, well, I, I know that story or that's a little bit different, but I kind of know what's happening here. Or I can draw my own conclusions about what Jesus is talking about or the Old Testament or the Psalm or whatever. But it's when it challenges us in a very personal way that we tend to perk up and listen, that we tend to say, oh, what am I supposed to make of that? The other things I can just attribute to other people. Of course, they shouldn't be doing those terrible things. But when it comes time for Paul to name something that we do, we're like, oh, that shouldn't be like that. I'm an okay person. I'm a wonderful person. That's the whole point of scripture. It's to challenge us, right? I mean, Jesus in this gospel reading challenges those who want to follow him. They're like, we want to follow you. And he says, great, come with me. And they say, well, first I got to do a couple of other things. And Jesus says, no, we're talking about the kingdom of God. This is imminent. This is right now. Leave those things behind and follow me. Right? The first disciples, when he said, come and follow me, they just left everything. Later on, people said, well, I don't know. I've got to do these other things. I've got to kind of hang out with my friends. I've got to do this. That's not what happens. In the Old Testament reading today that David did, we can tell that for Elijah and Elisha, that's sort of what happens, right? We have Elijah saying, no, you stay here and I'm going to go. And Elijah says, no, I'm not going to leave your side. Not only showing the steadfast love of a follower to his mentor, but also a real sense of what God is calling him to do. There are those times in our lives when we are tempted to say, you go ahead, I'm going to stay here for a while and I'll catch up. Now maybe we earnestly want to catch up or desire later to catch up. But the truth is, some of us just use that as an excuse, right? We say, oh well, you go ahead and I'll stay here, but I'll see you later. And I think Jesus talks to us about the imminency of, imminency of what he's doing and how his ministry goes. He's heading for Jerusalem. He's heading for that time when he's going to die and be resurrected. So there is no room for saying, well, we'll see you next Wednesday. Well, we'll see you at another time. Well, I've got to hang out and do stuff. It's that urgency that Jesus calls his followers to that we see in this gospel reading. It's the urgency of who they are and what they are. <clears throat> and they try to make excuses. They try, well, I've got to do this. Well, I've got to do that. Well, you know, yes, we all have other things to do. That's the thing about ministry. That's the thing about being a disciple. We can always come up with something else to do, Right? We can always come up with something else to distract us so we don't have to do the hard things that God asks us to do, right? We can always say, well, I've got something else to do. I can't help that person over there who needs help. Well, I've got something else to do. I can't show up and do this thing that will help the community. And in a way, Jesus is calling out our own selfishness, right? The list that Paul gives us is really talking about selfishness. What is it for me? What can I do for me? But those things that Paul talks about that we should be doing by guiding, being guided by the Spirit are the things that we do not for us, but for others. If we have those traits, what it really means is we live our lives for someone else besides us. And that's really what these stories are about. That's really what this is about. It's about realizing that we live our lives not for us, but for others. That our selfish desires are not more important than our will and our commandment to help other people in ministry and in love. Imagine the world for a second if everyone was as selfish, I won't name names, but selfish as some people that we know, right? Think of the most selfish person that you either know or hear about. Have that picture in your mind of who that is. Is that who you want to be? Is that how you want to be remembered? Or are we being called to something entirely different? Are we being called to the opposite of that person? Not in it for ourselves, not in it because we want to be the center of attention, that we want to be the one people talk about, that we want to be the one that people envy, but the exact opposite. The one that helps others, the one that is seen as the one who is following the commandments of God, the one who is guided not by their selfishness and the things of this world, 
but by their generosity in the things of the kingdom of God. We're being called out today, you and I. We're being called out because there are times when all of us, certainly me included, say I'm too busy to do this thing for someone else. When in fact, it's just my own laziness. When in fact, it's just that I need a distraction. We are called to be disciples in Christ for that specific reason. Because we do realize that we're not in it for ourselves. We do realize that God has guided us with his spirit so that we can help others and bring them to the fullness of the kingdom of God. So we're being called out. How are we doing that? How are you doing it? And what guides us to do that? Let us look at this list from Paul, not as a don't do this and do that, but as helping us, as guiding us to be disciples in Christ, to be true followers of the word, and to be guided by the Holy Spirit to do those things that God calls us to do. Not because we have to, we're worried about the consequences, but because we're guided not by us, but by the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit. Let us rejoice that we have been given this gift, this gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us. And let's use that gift to follow what God wants us to do and to be in it not for ourselves, but for others. Amen. <coughs> Service continues on page 189 in your Greek service books with the Apostles' Creed. Will the congregation please stand? Page 189. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will not be judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints. Please turn to the end of page 112 in your green service books. Lady number three, the prayers of the people. Page 112. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and all life, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for all who call themselves Christians that we may become a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to the praise of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Andrew, our diocesan, and Priscilla, our area bishops, for all bishops and other ministers, that they may remain faithful to their calling and rightly proclaim the word of truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen, for the leaders of the nations and all in authority, that your people may lead quiet and peaceable lives. O oh, Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this township of Rock and this village of Beaverton, and for all who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, men and women. We've been asked to pray specifically for Lily, for Tom, Ernie, Joe, Carol, Joan, Charlotte, Karen, Maddie, Linda, Kayla, Ida, Nicholas, Paul, Francis, Susan. Pray for all those living in long-term care facilities, the people of the Ukraine, for refugees from around the world. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. That you will show your goodwill to all. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the victims of our society and for those who minister to them, that you will be their help and defense. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those preparing for baptism and for those recently baptized, that you may be, that they may be strengthened in the faith. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
We give thanks for all the saints who have found favor in your sight from earliest times, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and those whose names are known to you alone. And we pray that we too may be counted among your faithful witnesses. Lord, 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 hear our prayer. We continue on page 191 in your great service books with the Confession and Absolution. Page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God he is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this holy table. Let us now confess our sins, confident in our Lord's eternal forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done to another. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we want to repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and exchange the peace with one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
and Savior Jesus Christ and serve one another in freedom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Service continues on page 198. We give us a prayer number three. Read service books, page 198. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Yes, we lift the heart of the world. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is your right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of life and light for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of fear into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, and send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ in his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, make, in the fullness of time, make us all, all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 211. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us on to temptation. But deliver us from evil, the mind is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now page 212, in practical sentence number three. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may our church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks be God. Calling 
congregation for the old rail to receive holy communion. If you wish a gluten free wafer for the communion rail, please tell me. Uh, we do have communion of both kinds, so we have wafer and wine. And so Hunter and I will go and, and get the community music to the rail. Um, I think Cheryl and Dave, you want to come first because you're doing coffee hour? Page 214 in your green book of all 
alternative services. Will the congregation please stand in prayer? God of power, we are nourished by the riches of your grace. Raise us to new life in your Son, Jesus Christ, and fit us for his eternal kingdom, that all the world may call him Lord. We ask this in his name. Amen. And glory to God. His power working in us. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and all your love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn is number 527 in your blue hymn books, Our Firm of Foundation, number 527. 